In this video, we're going to go over the remote interface uh, that comes up in Internet Explorer when you log into the IP camera from a remote location. And again, keep in mind, the IP camera is not connected to this computer. We are logging in remotely. The, the IP camera could be a million miles away, uh, we're, but we're logging into it from a different location. Uh, so you you could quite feasibly have your DVR server at your at your business. You could have an IP camera set up at a secondary location for your business, and then you could actually uh, log into the IP camera from from your home. Um, so keep in mind what we're looking at right right here is uh, I have logged into an IP camera at at a remote location. And uh, we're just going to go over the feature set of this interface and, and, and what's available to you and what changes you can make to the IP camera. Uh, the first thing I like to do, once, I'm, once I've logged in, uh, you usually get a window that looks like this. You can double click anywhere on the image and then it'll go ahead and fill up the screen real estate there. And if you have bandwidth issues, if you have maybe a slower internet connection, and you you maybe see some video drops out drop uh, video dropouts or there's a an issue with the quality of the video you can click this little button here which if you hover your mouse over it it'll say substring substring and that will give you uh, that will give you a version of the the video that isn't as bandwidth intensive it's not going to use up as much bandwidth. And you can see here when you double click it, you get a grainier image. But if you have a slower connection speed, you won't get as many dropouts or or uh, staggering in the frame rate as you would when you're using uh, what's called the master stream. So I'll go ahead and click out of that. And then you click the preview button here to bring back the master stream. I'm going to go ahead and double click that so that it fills up the screen again. Okay, uh, to configure the camera itself, you click the remote setup button here. And we'll click, we'll quickly go through each one of these tabs. The first one here, uh, server, it allows you to change the name, the IP address, the port number, and the password for the IP camera. And, um, some of these values here are going to be grayed out because you're not allowed to make changes to them, but those are the basic, those are the basic changes that you can make. Um, the second tab here, channel, this affects how the IP camera interacts with the remote computer, the one that you're, that you're viewing the IP camera from. Um, you can give the camera a name, you can choose the frame rate, resolution, uh, the image quality, whether or not the on-screen display is shown, the position of the on-screen display. Uh, you can create a privacy mask. You would check that. You get a grid. If there's something within, if, if there's an area within the image that you don't want people to see, you just click and drag and you can cover up the area with a box. I'm going to go ahead and clear that because we don't need that. You can schedule you can schedule this interface to record footage from the IP camera to the local hard drive on this remote computer. And the way you do that, there's a drop down box here where you choose the day of the week. You have these, these sections here called periods. You can choose different periods of time throughout the selected day uh, to record footage from the camera. Right now for period one, I have uh, 4 a.m. to 5 a.m. Period 2 is 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Period 3 is 1 o'clock to uh, 3 o'clock and so on. And this footage, again, the footage that you, the time intervals that you select here are, are going to schedule the IP camera to record to the local hard drive. So this isn't this footage isn't going to be recorded. This is these intervals that you select have no effect on the DVR server. They these intervals are going to be recorded to the local hard drive of the computer that you're accessing the IP camera from. And 
this last drop down here, you can choose whether you want the camera to use motion detection to record, uh, if you wanted to record based on uh, an alarm and you, your camera has uh, your camera has an alarm in and out where if you if you have uh, some sort of sensor or an alarm system you can connect those to your camera and that can actually you can set it up to trigger recording based on uh, the alarm and once you've once you've made all the changes here and you've you've scheduled how you'd like the 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 system to record on each day of the week uh, you want to make sure that you check this enable record button and you'll be set the next tab here this is if, if you have an IP camera with PTZ capabilities um, you can you can create presets you can set up a, a, a cruise schedule so that the PTZ camera can cruise between the different presets that you've created I'm not going to go into how to set that up. We have another video uh, that explains how to set up a PTZ camera, and that video explains uh, it's virtually it's virtually identical to this one. It explains how to make adjustments to these settings. The sensor uh, the sensor tab allows you to uh, determine what happens what what happens on the remote computer if a sensor or alarm system that's connected to the IP camera uh, is tripped off. So here you can create a name for the alarm and some alarms have, uh, some, some are NO, some are NC, depends on the type. This will make sense if you actually have a, an alarm or, or a sensor system connected to the camera. And you can choose whether or not you can choose what happens if the alarm or sensor goes off you can choose to display an on-screen warning an audible warning which means an alarm sound is gonna go off or you can you can actually set it up to trigger recording um, if you select trigger recording you can select which days of the week just like just like in the channel tab you can choose when you want when you want the system to be sensitive to the the alarm or the sensor going off uh, you you may decide if the alarm or the sensor goes off on Monday I don't I don't want any recording to occur you would just leave it as is 